Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm Instructor Jim Pytel, and today we'll examine several illustrated examples of basic parallel DC circuit analysis. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has more than a passing familiarity with basic parallel DC circuit properties, including Kirchhoff's current law, and can wield the DC current divider rule without cutting themselves. If you lack this requisite level of familiarity with these topics, please review the supporting material at the Big Bad Tech channel and return to these lectures when you are so qualified. Mastery of parallel DC circuit analysis necessitates active participation on your part, and as such, I'm encouraging you to please pause the lecture when asked to do so and attempt the example problems on your own. If your answers do not match those illustrated, by all means, feel free to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made. Our first illustrated example features a 48 volt source in parallel with R1, a 910 ohm resistor, and R2, a 1.2 kilo ohm resistor. We're being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, the power dissipated by each element, the source current, and the total power. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Before we begin the analysis of this circuit, it's perhaps worth a moment of our time to review fundamental parallel DC circuit properties. First, voltage across elements in parallel is the same. This is the most fundamental parallel circuit property. For this circuit, E equals V1, which equals V2, and they all equal 48 volts. Additionally, Kirchhoff's current law states that for any node, the summation of incoming currents equals the summation of outgoing currents. In short, what goes in must come out. A Kirchhoff's current law analysis of this parallel circuit suggests that source current equals I1 plus I2. Additionally, we should expect the smallest resistor in this parallel circuit to draw the largest amount of current and dissipate the largest amount of power. In this case, that would be R1. Conversely, we should expect the largest resistor in this parallel circuit to draw the smallest amount of current and dissipate the least amount of power. In this case, R2. Finally, power in always equals power out. For this circuit, power total equals P1 plus P2. There are several ways to obtain the desired figures. Perhaps the easiest, most direct means of doing so is through the simple use of Ohm's law. I1 equals V1 over R1. Substituting our given values yields I1 to be 52.7 milliamperes. P1 equals V1 times I1. Substituting our given values yields 2.5 watts. Similarly, I2 equals V2 over R2. Substituting our given values yields 40 milliamperes, and P2 equals V2 times I2. Substituting our given values yields 1.9 watts. Source current equals I1 plus I2. Substituting our calculated values yields 92.7 milliamperes. Finally, total power equals P1 plus P2. Substituting our calculated values yields 4.5 watts. As a means of checking our work, the parallel combination of a 910 and 1.2 kilo ohm resistor yields a total resistance of 517.5 ohms. An application of Ohm's law to this simplification similarly yields a source current of 92.7 milliamperes and a total power of roughly 4.5 watts. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct and we can move on to the next illustrated example. Our next illustrated example features a 24 volt source in parallel with R1, a 820 ohm resistor, R2, a 410 ohm resistor, and R3, a 750 ohm resistor. We're again being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, the power dissipated by each element, the source current, and the total power. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Voltage across elements in parallel is the same. For this circuit, E equals V1, which equals V2, which equals V3, and they all equal 24 volts. Kirchhoff's current law states that for any node, the summation of incoming currents equals the summation of outgoing currents. A Kirchhoff's current law analysis of this parallel circuit suggests that the source current equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. There are several ways to obtain the desired figures. Perhaps the easiest and most direct means of doing so is through use of Ohm's law and the power equations. I1 equals V1 over R1. Substituting our given values yields 29.3 milliamperes of current. P1 equals V1 times I1. Substituting our given values yields 702.4 milliwatts. Similarly, I2 equals V2 over R2. Substituting our given values is 58.5 milliamperes. P2 equals I2 squared times R2. Substituting our given values is 1.4 watts. Find that I3 equals V3 over R3. Substituting our given values is 32 milliamperes of current. P3 equals V3 squared divided by R3. Substituting our given values is 768 milliwatts. Source current equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. Substituting our calculated values yields a source current of 119.8 milliamperes. Finally, power total equals P1 plus P2 plus P3. Substituting in our calculated values yields a total power of 2.9 watts. 
As a means of checking our work, these three resistors can be combined in parallel to result in a total resistance of 200.3 ohms. An application of Ohm's law solving for a source current does indeed confirm that source current is 119.8 mA and total power is indeed 2.9 watts. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct and we can move on to the next illustrated example. Our next illustrated example features a 50 volt source in parallel with R1, a 1 kilo ohm resistor, and R2, a 1.4 kilo ohm resistor. We're again being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, the power dissipated by each element, the source current, and the total power. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Let's go about the analysis of the circuit in a different method. First, voltage across elements in parallel is the same. E equals V1, which equals V2, and they all equal 50 volts. Source current equals I1 plus I2. Let's start by combining these elements in parallel, which yields a total resistance of roughly 583.3 ohms. Using this simplification, we can solve for source current, where source current is equal to supply voltage divided by total resistance. Substituting in our given values yields 85.7 mA. Total power is equal to supply voltage times source current. Substituting our given values yields a total power of 4.3 watts. We can now use this data to solve for electrical properties of individual elements. Incoming current is known for a parallel combination of two known resistors. This is a perfect setup for the current divider rule. The current divider rule applied to resistor R1 demonstrates that I1 is 50 mA. An algebraic rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's current law equation for this circuit demonstrates that I2 is the remaining 35.7 mA. An application of Ohm's law confirms this result, where I2 is indeed 35.7 mA. P1 equals V1 times I1. Substituting our given values yields 2.5 watts. An algebraic rearrangement of the power equation demonstrates that P2 is the remaining 1.8 watts. As a means of checking our work, V2 squared over R2 does indeed yield 1.8 watts. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct, and we can move on to the next illustrated example. Our next illustrated example features a 36 volt source in parallel with R1, a 300 ohm resistor, R2, a 500 ohm resistor, and R3, also a 300 ohm resistor. We're again being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, the power dissipated by each element, the source current, and the total power. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Again, for the sake of variety, let's just go about this analysis slightly differently. The parallel combination of these three resistors represents a total resistance of roughly 115.4 ohms. Source current is equal to supply voltage divided by total resistance. Substituting our given values yields 312 mA. Total power equals supply voltage times source current. Substituting our given values yields 11.2 watts. We now know source current coming into a parallel configuration of three elements. Ordinarily, we could use the current divider rule, however the current divider rule is a special case scenario for only two parallel elements. Let's again simplify this circuit by taking the parallel combination of R1 and R3, both 300 ohm resistors, into a single resistor I'm calling R single prime, and R single prime is in parallel with R2. The parallel combination of R1 and R3 is 150 ohms. We now have a perfect setup for the current divider rule. Incoming current is known, and it's a parallel combination of two known resistors. Where source current splits into two paths I'm calling I single prime plus I3. The current divider rule set up to solve for I single prime yields 240 mA. Our single prime is actually the parallel combination of two identical resistors. If 240 mA enters a parallel combination of two identical elements, we should find current splits through them evenly. I1 equals 120 mA, as does I2. An algebraic manipulation of the Kirchhoff's current law for the second simplification demonstrates that I3 is I source minus I single prime. Substituting our calculated values yields the remaining 72 mA. The power delivered to identical resistors R1 and R2 is equal to the voltage across them times the current through them. Substituting our given values understandably demonstrates that P1 is 4.3 watts, as is P3. An algebraic manipulation of the power equation demonstrates that P2 equals P total minus P1 minus P3. Substituting our given values yields the remaining 2.6 watts. All right, let's move on to our final illustrated example. Our last illustrated example features three current sources, one at 30 mA, one at 50 mA, and one at 20 mA, in parallel with two resistors, R1 at 390 ohms and R2 at 750 ohms. For this last example, 
we're only being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element and the current through each element. Now, before you rush off to perform your analysis, make sure to note the direction of travel for these current sources. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Current sources in parallel add up. 30 plus 50 minus 20 yields a current source of 60 milliampers. The 60 milliampere current source is in parallel with R1 and R2. This is again a perfect setup for the current divider rule. Incoming current is known for a parallel combination of two known resistors. The current divider rule set up to solve for I1 yields 39.5 milliampers. An application of Kirchhoff's current law demonstrates that I2 is the remaining 20.5 milliampers. Finally, an application of Ohm's law demonstrates that voltage across resistor 1 is 15.4 volts. By extension, all elements in this parallel circuit must also experience a 15.4 volt differential. All right, that's it. In conclusion, this lecture examines several illustrated examples of parallel DC circuit analysis. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank you.